Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Papa Bale and welcome to my channel. This, I'm, we're going to call it the Kawasaki Pulse Motor. Um, it has three cores on it so far. One, two, three. And let's see if I, how, how high I can spin it for with the voltage. 120 something. Damn. And that's just me spinning it with my hand. I bet we can get up to around 200 volts. We can get up to around 200 volts if I turn this on. So I'm going to turn it on. See, it comes to a dead stop really fast with the, the cores in there. Oops. Sorry about the finger, folks. I don't have any really good tools to edit with at the moment, but I'll be getting those sooner or later. I'm going to try and get both things in here. Pulse motor spinning and the voltage. 138. Oh, so it's going up one at a time now. 150. So what I want to do is I want to get the coils aligned correctly. I want to get the coils aligned right. Look at how fast that slows down because of the course. I mean, geez. With three, it's like perma stop. That's going to be fun to see what the, the next two do. And then I got this magnetic cylinder, which is exactly the same size as the cores. That's, that's amazing. Look at that. So we're going to use the magnetic core as well. I don't know which way to put it in. <laughs> That makes, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Boom. Put that whole thing in there. Like, what? Look at that. That is phenomenal. All right. That's awesome. So we're going to close out with a spin. That is freaking awesome. 125 volts just off of spinning it with my hand. That's awesome. Small breakdown of what we have here. We got nine equally spaced neodymium magnets on the rotor. And they are spaced 40 degrees apart. We have this and two four filer co coils for drive coils. Um, there is no quote unquote torque with this particular model. There isn't, there isn't any torque really. That's why it stops like right away. I mean, there's like thrust, you know, it'll, it'll move forward. Those four filer coils are like. 700 rpms per watt like crazy fast coils and these you know that's what 738 um, rpms per watt so you got to have a little bit of ampage and a little bit of voltage to have a true watt you can do math and you can make things into watts and volts and all that crap, but in order to get a true watt, you're going to need some amps and you're going to need some voltage. Everything else is just in the matrix. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I don't know that for certain. It just feels like you should keep it simple.
All right. So, oh yeah, we were explaining. All right, we got the the drive delta, which is that this and that over there, and then we we're gonna hook it up with this one, and then we're gonna make another delta, that one, and then we're gonna change out this one and move this one over here and then we're going to do it all again we're going to put a coil here we're going to change out that one and we're going to put a coil right there okay and there it's going to be bing 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 Decided to break it up, but you know, in the, in the end, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it all be drive circuit. Everything's going to have power going through it, and it's going to be all drive circuit. But it's going to be three different circuits. You follow? Like every delta configuration is going to be its own closed circuit. For the most part, I mean, see what what I do this is I I strip the blue wire and the brown wire so that you can fit three clips on there, three clips on each, and that's where the transference occurs at the reed switch. Now some of the power gets transferred on, and if the power gets intermingled, I'm not worried about it. It is not a bad thing. What what is a bad thing is when one circuit interferes with another circuit, and if one circuit's aiding another circuit, that would not be considered interference in my mind at all. That would be considered helping out, not hindering. And just because it affects your numbers that you may have put on paper earlier does not mean that it's a bad thing. It might have meant that you're wrong about something, or I'm wrong about something. But I'm really anxious, and I haven't done it really all the way through yet. I'm really anxious and curious to see... Uh, ...how it will work. So it should be really interesting. And what we're going to do... For the drive circuit performance, um, we're going to hook transformer up to one circuit, and then I have another transformer that I'm going to hook up to another circuit, and then the third circuit will be on a battery. Or you know what? One circuit's good for the power supply here. And then I'll hook the transformer up to a battery via a switch to turn on and off. Yeah, that'll be awesome. I have two battery packs. So I'm thinking that I can do the last two drive circuits on uh, batteries. Or I do one drive circuit on a battery, one drive circuit on this transformer, and then one drive circuit just on the on the power supply. That means it can go up to 25 volts instead of 12 volts with the battery pack. Oh, I changed the shaft. It's not that long shaft anymore. It's this short nubby shaft. It's really sturdy. See, I don't know about the yoke though, if it's doing any good, but I'm just trying to block the EMF field. EMF. Because that. Uh, it's like quadrupled in the four filer coils, <laughs> I think. That would make sense. 
because that's this is 135 volts this transformer going through that four filer coil right there four times so it's it's not necessarily more higher voltage it's just I might might even I don't even know like what what goes on with the four filer EMF but I decided to yoke those yep well I think that that is going to do it for now uh, so we got BAM BAM and we're going to move this one straight across to right here alright sounds like a good deal Peace out. Have a good night. Please subscribe. Adios.